My mum and dad separated. He moved to England. So that's hard for any child. Of course. So he was gone a couple of years. Then my mum met Eddie Keaton. He would have been, we used to call him dad. He, he'd know Eddie Keaton know himself. Eddie, yeah. Yeah. Eddie yeah. would have been a friend of my dad's as well. Yeah. yeah. I know when we used to call him. So uh, we all, yeah, we all lived in the same house and we, we grew up, you know, we classed him as our dad and Eddie's family then, this is where the stepbrothers and stepsisters would come into it. We all kind of lived in under one roof. But um, he got 46, then he passed away and he died. So that was two kind of father figures that were gone mm. in our lives and in my mother's. Shortly after that, then my mum had cancer and she was sick. Thank God, no, she's all right. So, um, you know, it was stressful times for the family as well. But, um, so then your body just, your because you're the all, 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 you're all, it's true, all of this, I always felt like you're waiting for something bad I, to happen. Like, yeah. yeah, you're waiting for the next yeah. bad thing to happen. But like. I took a lot of this on, like, we're all very close. Me, my brother, Pat, Stephen, and we're like, we all look after each other, you know. Um, I took a lot of this on myself. I just felt responsible. I don't know why. I just felt like I had to help everyone and I, I was kind of either. And it, 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 you know, it was no one asking me to do it. Mm. But it was a lot of pressure and a lot of grow I think I had to grow up very fast. Mm. Mm. Um, I can understand that. Do you know what? It's like you have to yeah. grow up a bit faster than. than, than uh, and that's why you were saying you seem to have your head screwed on. Mm. And I don't know if it's by choice. I don't know. Is it just like. It's just your personality. Your like personality. Some, some people. In a situation like that, yeah, they can become a victim and they can maybe use a lot of drugs and you know feel bad. Yeah. And other people become the the, the fixer. And your yeah. in, in your family you would have fixed you right, all right, I'm gonna be grow up here now and look after people to make sure everybody yeah. everybody's alright and you've been in that mode since then. Yeah. Always kind of worrying about making sure everybody's okay. Yeah. Um it's like your role within your family, like. Yeah. And and it's you know I think then sometimes it can nearly even become if you do it so often it's expected yeah so when you do take a step back it's like what the fuck is his problem <laughs> you know when you're not running racing but um yeah it's sometimes you have to take the step back for you know i did I, I did i def i definitely did you know there's only so much you can do to help people and like if you if you can't look after yourself and your own mental health isn't there how, how are you supposed to help others um yeah, I had that so, same that same dilemma as well. Do you know when I when I came into recovery first, and I I was living out in Wilton in a house a house blanked in assignment, and I stayed away from up here for a while, and I stayed away from certain people, and I was feeling like I was being disloyal and I was abandoning them. But when I'm strung out of my head up here, I'm no good to nobody. And yeah, I, I have to take my step away from that madness, and I can help them from here. But when I'm in all that, I'm no good to anybody like that. Like yeah. No, it's very hard when you're stuck in the middle yeah. to, to see what's going on. Sometimes you need to step out and look in rather than be in the middle of it, you know. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, then it's... You, um, you had a lot of anxiety and, and yeah. so you went to the doctor. What was the doctor saying? So, yeah. So the do- yeah, we go back to that. Um, so the doctor was just saying, Shane, I asked you, I had your normal upbringing. You told me, yeah. <laughs> it's the furthest thing from it, is what he said. So he was like, all right, fair enough. What, what to be, even though I felt depressed. But for me, like, I felt by opening up and actually admitting that you're depressed, it felt like a weakness, that you're weak. Yeah. And that you're soft. But when in reality it wasn't. It's a strength, isn't it? It, it, it can become a strength if you use it in the right way. Mm. Um, but that's what I'd say. If someone is feeling any, any of these symptoms, and there's a thousand other ones, what we were talking about, or if you're any bit worried, talk to someone open up you're not weak you're not soft because it was probably the bravest thing i ever done by actually coming out and saying it yeah. Do you know what? no at the time i i wouldn't even tell someone i didn't even tell people i went to the doctor that i was talking because I, I, they'd be saying what were you going for mm. Do you know and I, and I wouldn't even say oh my head is wrecked i was depressed Do you know when i was actually going there from sleep it's not something you say up around here really it's not something yeah. you say especially uh, a group of lads like do you know yeah, because yeah, you're with all the boys. And, you know, I had brilliant friends growing up. I still do. Um, but it's just not something you say. And I can guarantee all the four group, a lot of the lads felt the exact same way as I did. Yeah. But it's not something, you, as you said, it's not something you'd say in a group. Yeah. It's masked with alcohol and yeah, coke like for and me, stuff. Yeah, it, like there's a lot of drugs as well brought into it. Like for me, thank God, um, I was around people that were taking drugs. And, I, it was you know, drugs is very easy to access, especially... 
you know, up where we grow. Yeah. Um. But for me, it would have been drink. I was never an alcoholic. I was never someone to, someone to drink five, six, seven days a week. But I could drink Friday, Saturday, Sunday and be depressed for weeks and weeks and weeks. But I was only drinking to bottle things up, thinking it would make me feel better. Uh, but even that alone, drink can be as dangerous as anything else. It, it, and it, it has is, a knock, it has a knock. It, it could be the first mm. step to other things. Like some people just drink, there's coke, and then everything else on top of it. Mm. Um, I think the drink just kills people lo- in a longer period than than some drugs because and like, wither away. Yeah, mm. it just it just takes you bit by bit. Whereas drugs then will kill you. You can kill you instantly. It's harder, yeah. Do you know by yeah. overdose or yeah? Uh, do you know? Yeah, um, yeah, but it, it could really it really could have went either way. And what was the doctor's advice? So the doctors, are like, I, I'm far from an expert anyway, and I'm going to say this before you go any further, but the doctor was like, oh, yeah, give me two seconds here, I'll write your prescription. And he was like that. He was, I was like, what is it? He says, oh, it's just something to help you sleep. I says, I don't want, I'm not, you know, like that. I, I don't need to take, I, I'd have to be in agony to take a painkiller, you know. Um, and I, I asked him, I said, what was it? He says, oh, it's only something mild, just take that. He says, it will help you sleep. Um, so I went home and I Googled it. It's probably one of the strongest antidepressants that was on the market, like, mm. and I can't think of the name of it, no, to be honest. I was put on a, a tablet by the name of Sorlin at one stage. Mm. I was an antidepressant as well. It was for depression. Yeah. Um, but he gave it to me. I took it home, left it in the cupboard for a week or two. And I was kind of mm. thinking... Will I, will I want it? Will I want it? And then I was like, Do you know, what? people in my family have had to take them. Friends had to take them. And a lot of the time, in my opinion, they're just giving up too free, too freely and too quick, without thinking up, thinking of an alternative. Like, why couldn't that GP say to me, "Have you tried a bit of reading or a bit of exercise? Are you training? Is there anything else? Do you know, as an outlet that that you could use." as a form of helping yourself rather than just give this young fella a tablet. He didn't even know me. I was sitting down talking to him for three minutes. I know, but you know, Four minutes. research shows, you know, in around Ireland, each district is for the HSE purposes. Now, like each district, each each area has a district and the district we're living in is Cork North Lee, north side of Cork yeah. City, Cork North Lee. Cork North Lee has the highest prescribing rates of tranquilizers than anywhere else in Ireland. I 